It was used in the beginning to supply consumers with electrical needs, but it doesn't go far, far. So each neighborhood had their own generators, and they had to calculate what is the power drop every time the power uh, had, to supply, had to be supplied to a house. Transmission for a long distance was impossible without using a generator to boost power. So that was a big issue. With uh, water, we still use the same thing. Direct pressure, that's why we always have a booster pump in every neighborhood, to increase the pressure. Otherwise, it's not going to work. What, what else do we do for big towns? If you go to further towns where there's not a lot of power supply, what do they use? If you go in the turnpike in New Jersey, along the highway, what do you see? Big towers with yeah. big tanks on them. Those kind of booster pumps to increase the pressure every once in a while. So you pump the water up to the tower, and that tower will supply water to the, to the town and give it some pressure. Otherwise, the water will not flow inside the house. If you go to South America or some other countries where they have big buildings, usually they have a tank on top of the building. So the, you fill, there's a pump in the bottom, there's enough municipal pressure. So you fill the tank in front of the building and keep it filled because it has enough pressure to supply the house. Uh, here we don't need to do that because we have enough pressure for each district to supply the, the house with enough pressure. Otherwise, you open the pot and there is no pressure at all. So the same thing with DC. You see if you have direct current, you will need to do the same thing. You have a booster station everywhere to increase the power. Also, there's the inability to raise and lower the voltage. We cannot increase the voltage, step it up or step it down, or down meaning this, the, having a transformer is really difficult with DC current. So we will use that. Requires use of large transmission equipment. So in the past, we did have that, but we stopped doing that after the invention of the AC current. OK? So this is simplistic schematics of what do we have now. We have a power plant. They make around 120 kilovolts, <coughs> 220 kilovolts. This is what they produce in volts. Watts are different. They have a lot of watts, something like around 15 megawatts, which is a million watts. But this is the, the voltage they produce. You get a substation that will step that down to 4,800 volts. Some of them go to commercial or industrial buildings where they have three-phase 400 power, more than that. Or you can have, again, it, it, you will go to another transformer that will step the, down the power even lower. You go to residential where we have 120 and, 100 and 240. Is that the apparent or actual power? That's the apparent power. If you calculate it, it's going to be 120. But if you measure it, it's different. And I'll show you how we measure the power here. And it's not 120, 117, 115 in a good day. And it does change back and forth. So in your panel here, we have 240 coming in, two hot lines. Are this double phase or single phase? It's single phase. Single phase. But it's confusing. <laughs> the, the, the current is the same. It's going at the same time in the same place in different direction. So what would it look like? If this is my my voltage, the other phase will be the same way. If they start and end at the same point, then it's single phase. It's just different direction. Plus or minus, right could be, yeah. It, like, it kind of already has the screwed line. You just gotta put the. Not that much coincidence. But if it visually helps you, this is what it looks like. That already has yeah. it, and it's a line. The, that line on the middle, it shows the thing that you already showed. So, yeah, if you look at this, this is a bracket for 220. You see it has two inlets. So, you plug it in, and you're gonna get two <coughs> of these lines. So, you're gonna have two. 120, which will give you 240, sometimes 220, depending. How does it produce the 240? Huh? How does it produce 240? It's like it comes as calculated 240 to a transmission line, but when you measure it, it's different because there's something called the power factor. 
We talked about that uh, last class. It's the apparent power and what actually you get in the socket. It's different based on the power drop and also different kind of calculation as well. Because if you think about it, they give you, they are giving you the 240 over here at the peak power. The effect is going to be different. And, and that has to do with the power factor. Could be higher, could be lower. And uh, usually it's not, uh, it's not going to be the top. It, it, it fluctuates. So is the frequency. So 240 volts, single phase, 60 hertz system. This is what you have in your house. Single phase alternating current exists in most residents. Most appliances are 120 volts rated. 110 to 120. For all the structure, probably you find single phase two wire system. Uh, it's the most common uh, used for appliances, <coughs> especially in the US. In Europe, they have 220. That's the standard. You will find that's why when you buy appliances that are universal, it will tell you it's between 110 to 240. So you don't have to worry about the voltage. They make it universal, so you can plug it anywhere without being concerned about the changing the voltage. So, uh, different schematic, different structure. Again, in Europe is 220, 240 volts. Uh, they believe in some way it's more efficient. The equipment that's running with 240 actually are more efficient because you have more pressure, you use less wattage. Uh, and that proved to be evident when you use an, an oven or when you use an AC, old AC, or a dryer. Visually, they are 240. With light bulbs and small appliances, they did not make a big difference. This is single phase. What is this? Fuse. Fuse. You always put the fuse on the hot line, not in the neutral. Doesn't help. Uh, this is, again, two legs hot. So this 240. Fuse, fuse, and neutral. And sometimes you have fuse, fuse, and ground. Uh, old wiring systems are completely different than what we are used to. Back in the days, they did not have ground. They used to use the ground as the water pipes, which is not the code anymore. But in old houses, probably it's still there. And also the knob and tube is still there where they bring up. They do not use conduits. They just put it on knobs and keep running the wire. It's still okay, but the, if it's there, it's grandfathered in. Otherwise, you have to change it. So this is how it did. What does the special look like? Transformer. Transformer. So 4,800 volts coming down to 120. <coughs> it's a big transformer. We do that also in our appliances. We change 120 to what? 10,000 volts. We saw the transformer. Let's step up the, the power all the way to uh, 10,000 volts or 10,000 <coughs> volts. Any questions so far? Three phase voltage system. Where would you find three phase? Commercial. Commercial? Yeah. This building has three phase. If you have big compressors, probably you'll have three phase. And in factories too. In factories, old buildings, commercial buildings, even residential buildings. Well, if they have central air, probably you will have three phase. What about projects? Probably, yeah. You they have three phase, yeah. And they step it down, and probably they have bigger. Compressors, uh, three hot legs of power, and we have three phase with two zero eight volts, one ground distribution of the equipment. It's more versatile than single phase because you can, from that, you can, if you have three phase coming to you, you can do 220, you can do 110, 120. It's more versatile, that's what I mean by that. Advantages require no starting apparatus. What are they talking about? Compressors. Compressors and oh. motors. So motors usually need large motors require capacitors to push the motor out of phase. With three phase, you don't need that. Once you supply power, it's gonna go right away. It's not need a capacitor. Oh, for better starting running, characteristic for motor is smoother running. Power consumption is relatively better than other motors. The advantage is they have the high cost of electric panel. To install, they charge you more because it's commercial, and they even charge you more per watt because again, it's supplying a lot of voltage. But they consider that you're, it's a commercial plant, so we're making probably some money out of it, and they have different tariff for that. 
240 volt three phase 60 hertz delta system. What is delta system mean? What do you think it's gonna look like? Triangle. Triangle? Triangle. So yeah, always like, delta is the Greek yeah, like the word for airline. triangle. Like the airline. Yeah. Delta is uh, usually like a triangular area because the letter delta in Greek looks like a triangle. So I think delta is going to be uh, triangular. So uh, it, it supplies a lot of power, three half legs, and mucho. Let's look at it. Ta da! Triangle. Three half legs coming in. Between each two legs is 120. 120 and 240 between them. Again, it's very versatile. The two lines are all hot. <laughs> between them, it is 240. So if we go between one line and the other legs, it's gonna be 208. If you go between the two hot legs, you can't, you don't hit 240. And in the tall, you can get 240, so you can get more, more variance of voltage than other systems. This is uh, an example of delta system. It's kind of messy, but you have different phases. You get phase one, phase C one, line one, line two. And this is something we had actually in the shop here because we have some lathe machines that require three phase. We have the milling machine that require three phase. We pull, there are two transformers, if you notice, this is the panel. We're taking the three phase and making one phase 120 out of them. So if you notice, next to each panel, there is a small transformer that's humming all the time over there. That's what it's doing. By the way, transformers are not supposed to be humming. They're supposed to be quiet. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody tells you it's normal, it's not normal, I did ask him. So they got to replace it. Huh? So they got to replace it. Yeah. So where do you think the humming is coming from? From magnets? Well, if we, uh, there's some kind of vibration going on. Oh. If you hear something, then there is vibration yeah. happening. Yeah. And if we have AC, there is something vibrating going back and forth 60 times per second. So something is oscillating based on that. Something is loose. Something is not how it's supposed to. And the vibration is causing that hum. Two, zero, eight, three, phase 60 hertz, Y system. What do you think it looks like? Now why is it spelled this way? I have no idea. But they want to make it. It's a Y system, so what does it look like? A Y. It looks like a Y. <laughs> Good name. So they have it in schools, hospitals, and office buildings. Again, the Y system and the Delta system just to give you more variety. So you have three legs. Uh, let me show you this. This is a switch box for three phase. How do I know it's three phase? Because there are three hot legs. How do I know that there are three hot legs? Huh? Yeah. What goes in here? Fuses. fuses. So I have three fuses. That means there are three hot legs. So it's three phase. And please, if you look at uh, an AC before you open the panel, look at the power supply. What is the power supply? Is it three phase? Okay, it's three phase. So I'm gonna go check every leg, make sure it's, it's running. Otherwise, it's not going to work. The first thing you do, when you go to an equipment, check the power. It's as simple as that. Sometimes you go to somebody for no heat call and you find somebody turned off the, the emergency switch. It's as simple as that. Uh, I'll tell you, most 50% of the time it's thermostat, no power coming in, somebody turned off the switch. Simple as that. So go back to simple solutions before you go deeper and dismantle the whole thing. Who was that uh, who told me like uh, he had a broken car for a long time and he was trying and trying and he realized that the car has no gas. <laughs> he had a car sitting in the garage for a while. He didn't turn on, didn't turn on. He changed the battery, changed the alternator, and they kept going for a while. Then it was a little bit of gas and fuel, so it will turn a little bit, but then it will cut off. They changed the fuel pump, and then they realized that there isn't enough gas in the car. Simplicity, just simple things. This is one of the first things you things you do if it doesn't start. Huh? Make sure there's gas in it before you do anything else. Keep that in mind, please. <laughs> That's what you do. Keep that in mind. <laughs> oh you, you'll be surprised because you'll go there and tell you it was running silent and stopped working. So you, you don't think about that. Okay. Does it have gas? So the troubleshooting yeah. usually, same thing actually with the oil tank. I have no heat. Did you check the tank? Did you check the gate? Is there oil in the tank? 
This is always the first question. Oh, when did you fill the tank last? Look at the tank. Maybe the tank has water in it. So check the gas line. Is there bubbles in the line? Is it locked out? Is it locked out? <laughs> so is it flashing? So start with the basic things. <sighs> Most likely, this is what is going to be, be your, your issue. This is the wire system. Again, it goes with the wire. Three legs. L1, L2, L3, and you can get 204 from those three legs. Three phase system is what it looks like. We have three currents at different locations. If they're going at the same time, then it's a single phase. These are three phases. The power coming out of it, power factor. V RMS. What is RMS? Oh. Uh, square square. Yeah. This is the average it's power you can get to active power, RMS, 0 0.707 per mass. If you look at the multimeter, it also says something like that, RMS. So give you RMS, which is like the average. The fancy word for average. I don't think they have it here. But that's what it means. Distribution, panel, delta, and Y. So I, I like this. This slide because it has all the information you need to know about the Y and the system. Do you need to do that? Do you know that? Not necessarily, unless you work for commercial installation probably they will need you to know these things. So it looks like three phase Y system. Higher voltage becoming more and more popular because again it's more efficient in terms of how much energy I need to consume. So a lot of commercial buildings now are asking for three phase. They will charge you for the panel, but it's better to have equipment that runs with high torque with uh, with uh, three phase. Question: What <coughs> RMS is? That's a true RMS. A true RMS is a root mean square, which is the average, the actual average. So it's they will measure yeah. more. So it takes more measurement per second than the, it will average for you, because yeah. it fluctuates a lot. So root mean square give you the the average that you need to know. Uh, industrial buildings. Some commercials and also some big buildings, like projects or big housing projects, probably they have more than single phase. Several systems 240 to uh, 480, 240 to 416, 277 to 480. I haven't seen much of that. I did see 240 and 480 because we have that here in the shop. So if you work in a mill, power plants, big pumps, probably you will, you will see this. Different switches, different relays. Uh, the disadvantage of higher voltage and higher phases, and more phases, it's, co uh, it's very costly. The panel costs more, the switch costs more, the wire has to be thicker, so it will cost you more in the capital, and it's mostly for commercial. Uh, wire system again, schematics for the hookups. How is it hooked up? Again, can you change anything with the wiring? And you know why? No, you can't. You just go and trace it, make sure it's running. For you, that's what you are concerned with. You're going to go and hook up your AC to this three phase power. That's what you can do. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you're not supposed to. A licensed electrician has to do that. If you do it even in your own house, you're not going to get uh, insurance in that house. They need to see the certificate of the guy who did who the wire. So you can, after you pass your oil your license to wire things all the way to the to the AC. What about the, what about if you have a if you install air conditioning? You have your EFA license, can you install ACs and charge them by yourself? Yes. No. You can but you're not allowed to. And you have to wait uh, work for five thousand hours, apply for your refrigeration license, then you will be able to do your own installs. How many hours? Five thousand hours. Yeah. Which is one year work as an apprentice. It's more than that. Huh? It's more than that. Between, like, two and a if you years. go to school here, probably it does will come towards your hours. Oh. So five thousand hours, one hour, six, either five thousand hours, uh, five thousand, or six thousand. But you work for a year with somebody, <coughs> then you can apply for the test, then you can work by yourself. And it's really important to have your license because it's your license in the line. You're gonna get insurance. So if anything goes wrong, probably they choose to pay for it, and they need some kind of visibility. Would you want somebody with a license to install your AC? No. I want somebody to actually know what they're doing. So. Key terms we covered, alternators, delta system, 50 voltage, 
frequency, peak voltage, that's here. Phase is current. Power factor is the effective voltage or calculated vo uh, voltage divided by the actual, or the actual voltage divided by the uh, calculated voltage. Sine wave, this is the sine wave. Single phase, that's one phase here. Three phase, three waves, phi system, looks like a Y. Connection, two hot legs and one neutral. That's it. All right.